This podcast is brought to you by San Diego County Toyota Dealers. We've got what it takes. Fix Auto, Corky's Pest Control. Welcome to yet another San Diego Prep Insider Basketball Podcast. Tommy, Aaron, Christian here great to bring greens. you great bro. Oh, I missed out on that. I missed out. There we go. Um, <laughs> yeah, Scott Kaplan, make sure out there. Um, we got our usual usual deal with a little bit of a twist here. We got our top tens. We got our game balls. We've got our dunker dish, and we got a little interview in there. We're going to throw after our after our game balls. So I should be excited. Not going to tell you who yet. Not going to tell you who yet, and then we will get to our game picks. But before we do anything, let's get to our top tens. Aaron, take it away. All right. Well, um, we start the year. Um, we start my top ten out very much the same. Foothills Christian at one, Saints at two, uh, Torrey Pines at three, um, Viss at four. Then there's you know a little bit of the changes going on where we had Sarah undefeated still moving into five, um, six to Santa Fe Christian moving up even though they took a loss to Viss, a very close loss. I still give them a lot of credit for um, trying to defend home court against a really good team. Seven is Mission Hills moving back into the top 10, um, playing really good basketball right now. Eight, as you guys know, my aversion to conflict, I gave it to the La Jolla schools, the Vikings and the La Jolla Country Day Tories. That's what we call you, Slash. That's right, Slash in the building. Um, <laughs> <laughs> of course, we round out um, our top 10. Um, 10th, I had uh, Helix. And I can't even remember who my number 19 was. I think it was the Modern Day Catholic it was Crusaders. Modern day, yeah, Modern Day. There you go. Uh, so for the San Diego Prep Insider staff in reverse order, number 10, Modern Day. Aaron, that's your number 9. Number 9, Sarah. 8, La Jolla. You got to give Sarah some credit, man. They're undefeated. They haven't lost a game. 9, Sarah. 8, La Jolla. 7, Rancho Bernardo. 6 is Mission Hills, especially after all the transfers are really jumping up there in the rankings. Um, number 5, Helix, another team that's benefiting from the transfers. Number 4, Vista. 3, Torrey Pines. 2, Foothills Christian. And number 1, still, Saints. That's where we see it. Uh, but again, we're gonna, there's going to be some good games this weekend. It'll probably shake up the top 10 again. So we'll see what happens after next week. Uh, we got some game balls now. Some guys who played well last week. Christian, I'll let you start this one off. All righty. Uh, let's go real quick through it. Uh, a couple from the SDLA Challenge. want to talk about. First one I'll give out to Bryce Pope. And oh. The pontiff himself, um, and he blessed Tory Pines with many threes. Um, I'll throw in kind of Jake Gilliam also because you all always have to talk Jake Gilliam when you talk the success of Tory Pines this series or uh, this year. They're really just they keep getting better. They're making it really crowded up there at the top. Um, keep going. Let's stick with the SDLA challenge. I'll also give one to DJ Wilson from Horizon. He nailed a big free throw at with no time left on the clock to send it into overtime. Wow. Yeah, so that that was a clutch moment. That where you, is probably one of the most difficult things to do in sports. Man. Absolutely, in, especially in a quiet gym where you can hear your own heartbeat. Yeah, so that was a big moment from DJ. Um, keep going. Uh, let, let's talk. We talked Mission Hills. I'll just give kind of a group to – Warren Washington, Ed Fenzi, and Chris Olave. The the ball movement and selflessness from that team, they get a group game ball. That team is just night and day from before the transfer mark to after the transfer mark. Mission Hills is the real deal now. Um, and then I'll round out my game balls with Darnell Johnson from Point Loma. They uh, beat Christian, and Darnell was a really big part of getting that offense jump started. He plays really physical in all realms of the front and back court. And so, DJ, if you're out there, next time I'm on the golf course, I need a big putt. I think I'm just going to bring you out the course and need just a putt. If you, you got the clutch gene, I don't. So, I yeah. So. <laughs> <the clutch>. <laughs> <laughs> Send him on over to the Masters, maybe for, for some golf. <laughs> we need a clutch putt. Uh, Aaron, who are your game balls? All right, my game balls are going to Jordan Van Omring of Foothills Christian. Um, picking up the slack for a couple of guys, he had a really good game 18 points, 15 boards as Foothills Christian defeated Linwood in the, um, in the other showcase that the winter was run. the winter run over at Cathedral. Catholic. Um, I'm also going to give game balls to the big men in the middle last night. I don't know. We're going to talk about this a little later, I'm pretty sure. Proud as a peacock Christian Pedersen over here. Score one for public schools, baby! <laughs> Kearney got the win um, last night over Cathedral Catholic, um, pushing me further down in the standings. But uh, Robbie Robinson, 25 points, 21 rebounds in the victory. Brandon McCoy, though, 44 points. 27 rebounds. I mean, those are like 1980s NBA slam. That's monster. Numbers. That that's slam. You're, you're, you're scoring. That's against. NBA jam numbers from the 90s. He's heating up. He's on fire. He's on fire. No, I know what you're talking about. I I had it done to me numerous times by by a girl at UCLA, right? No, well, no, I'm saying in the video game. Oh, the, the, oh the, different the, story. The me getting dunked on <laughs> thing that was once. 
I told you that in confidence. Wait, is, is there, is there, is, is, wait, is, I forgot to ask, is there video of this? There's got to be video of this somewhere. Oh, no, no, it's all been oh. deleted. There's been a gag order signed by a judge and everything. Um, I, I just leaked it, man. And it wasn't fake news, guys. And now this, <laughs> and this you trying to claim that I've been crossed up by anyone that attends UC, all that. No photos, no evidence. All right, so those are our game balls. We got a quick little special thing for you. We got a little uh, interview out at uh, Patrick Henry. We got... Jelani Mitchell and Christian Choice. Yes. The new kid here from Tennessee. Tennessee. Very good players for um, a really good Patrick Henry team. Can we start calling Chris Choice the option? You know, uh, choice, choice option. option. He's the option, okay. you know? We'll see if that's next. Probably one second. Anyway, guys, uh, thanks for joining us. First question I got to ask you if no one's gone out to a Patrick Henry game yet, what are they missing? We're starting to mold together as a team, and we're playing defense better. Uh, yeah. Yeah, we, it, pretty much what he said, but to sum it up, like, we still got a lot of stuff to work on. Like, we we a top 10 team, but we want to be number one. And, uh, yeah, offense is going pretty well. And uh, defensively, we could be a little bit better, holding teams a little less. Like, at the beginning of the season, we was beating teams by 30, 40 points, 20 points, and uh, stuff like that. But we still just got to keep our head on focus. And guys, what game are you guys looking forward to for the rest of the season? What game should we come out to? We kind of we we passed that game. That game was a uh, helix, but I think that the the most the next one that I'm looking forward to would be uh, either Kearney or La Jolla. Those are the two two teams that I'm looking for. What about you, sir? Uh, I don't really look forward to any games. I just go in every game thinking each of my opponents are the same person. Try to kill. And yeah, that's all. All right, guys, we got to know, usually there's some secret to the success. What's the pregame ritual that's been having, having all the luck for you guys this year? I got to take a nap. A nap before every game. And what else do I do? What do I do? A nap? Man, he just, yeah, it really is just a nap. If you don't take a nap, then he be acting, no, it's not even if he lose. He just, he, he be, don't take a nap before the game, we're losing. Nah, he just be acting crazy. Like, during the locker room, we'll be in there, he be, we be playing music, he be getting too hyped sometimes. But, we, yeah, we... We just, it's pretty much the same thing every, uh, every game. Like, we get our head on, head on tight, get that music going, and uh, get ready to play. So, oh, yeah. that's what it was. You yeah, gotta bump that, gotta bump the Travis Scott before the game. Like, you gotta have it. Yeah, that's where. All right, cool. Thank you, guys. Good luck so far this season. We we are not sleeping on you, though. We will be out there to those games, and we've you've seen them a couple times, haven't you? I've seen them. Yes, yeah, definitely. And I've I've heard that Christian has also become a uh, California burrito addict since Ooh. moving here. Um, it's the real deal. Yeah, you can't can't stay away from those. Trust me, I know. Has he has he, has he found it and out yet? We'll have to take some to him. You probably can find it pretty easily here yeah. in San Diego. Overrated. Well, come, okay, on, well, so come on, come we on. We'll talk about this later. <laughs> <laughs> we'll this so we can go eat. Yeah, we're going to go eat. Okay, so so uh, we're going to go to our, our Dunker Dish or debate segment here. Uh, first one that we're going to talk about, we're talking about the juniors a little bit. Yeah. Dunker Dish, the class of 2018, is the best class we've seen in five years. Aaron, what do you think? I I'm going to dish this one. Um, you know, sometimes we, you know, forget how good certain classes were. The class that just graduated, the 2016 class, was ridiculously deep. You had eight guys go Division One out of that class, including one guy who's serving up double-doubles every night over in Westwood. I'm um, one TJ Leaf. And you have a player starting in the ACC for Georgia Tech and Justin Moore. You know, not to mention guys at Rice. You know, you see um, – um, Cal State Bakersfield, Yale, you know, the goggles, Eric Monroe. I mean, it's a, you know, it's, it's a re that was a really good class. How does 2018 stack up? Um, at the top, it's, you know, pretty good. It's, it's almost com comparable when you have Tayshawn and Miles and Warren, of course. You've got three, you know, six, nine-plus guys. That hasn't happened in a class. But in terms of the overall depth of the class, right now I have to give it to 2016. Christian, what do you think? You know, I'm going to dunk this one. You're looking at, at, at maybe some different metrics than I am. You're talking about star power and moving on to the next level. I'm talking about the here and the now. Mm -hmm. Open division this year is crowded because of juniors making contributions to big name teams okay. and and division two and and three even like you look at a lot of these races this year because young blood is being infused into these teams and making the race really tight. 
maybe this is a hard one to judge because we won't know for a year or yeah. two, and, and you could be right about that. But the way I see it right now is, is we're talking about what is the best for inside San Diego high school basketball. And I see 2018 as really being a great infusion of parity into the San Diego County scene. And, and, and so I will, maybe based on different criteria than you, I'll dunk this one. Okay. All right, one dunk, one dish, or second dunk or dish. Richard Polanco currently has 13 double doubles. That leads the county, guys. He will end up leading the county when it's all said and done. Dunk or dish? Um, you know, reverse 360, <laughs> dunk that one. Yes, Richard Polanco of Army Navy is having an incredible season. I'm going to dunk this one based on two things. One, the guys that I feel that can catch him have a lot of work to do because they sat out for 30 days. Guys like Warren Washington and Miles Norris have kind of, you know, they have a gap and they're probably not going to be able to close it. And second of all, because Richard Polanco is that team. I mean, he's putting up, he's doing yeoman work when all he season. From it being a smaller rotation and they're not going to go seven or eight deep, so he's going to have the, the court time yeah, he's to gonna, get out there. He's play. going to have the court time, but he is, I mean, he, you know, he does everything for that team. He's their ball handler, their distributor. Um, along with J.C. Conahuate, who's had a really good year as well. But, you know, you have to rely on him to stay in a lot of these games. I mean, there were games this year where he had 28 points and 26 rebounds. I mean, these are these are excellent numbers. You know, hopefully it translates, you know, to, you know, a Division One scholarship. You know, at, at some point, you know, he had multiple offers young, um, earlier on in his career, and I still believe he's a, a Division One prospect. I know that there's a number of schools like Pacific that are still interested in him. Someone's going to make a yeah. great find yeah. with him. But I, I don't, I don't see anyone being able to, you know, catch up with him. He's built a really big lead. Christian, um, I'm going to put a like a, just a baby little dunk okay. on this one. Uh, I, I agree with you that the statistics show that it's his race to lose. Yeah. He, he has the lead already. He has the playing time. I want to talk about maybe one dark horse candidate, if I will, to put a little pressure on him. And that's going to be Charlie Gal from La Jolla. Okay. Charlie is a junior who's kind of a little bit of an unknown because he's filled in now and he hasn't been the featured piece previously. He's averaging a double-double right now. And I think that he could be somebody that, given the back and forth with him and Reed, there could be a, a, a run there. He's been a big, you know, you know, last year he, as a sophomore, he started early on and then his role, you know, kind of decreased. And he's definitely had a really good year. Um, you know, definitely so that, that Robin. Yeah. And, and Robbie and yeah, Brandon. And there, there's a lot of good yeah. ones. But, yeah, Charlie Gallo might be somebody who kind of, without the fanfare of getting double teamed every yeah. single night, could pick up those numbers and give a little pressure to him. But I will say that it's Polanco's race to lose. Okay. All right, so that's our Dunkin' Dish. Now on to the game picks. We're going to start with a couple games from uh, – three games from Friday, one game from Monday, one game from Tuesday. The first game we're going to talk about on Friday's game I'm going to be at. It is Vista at Canyon Crest. I'm gonna go with the upset guys. I'm gonna go with the home team, the Ravens. I think they will. This is a big. This will be their big win. I think for the year. What do you think, Aaron? I'm gonna go with Vista. Um, I think it'll be a very close game. I had a chance to see Canyon Crest for the first time this season, and I was just astounded by how well they execute their offense um, to get open looks for their shooters, Ryan Michaels, um, Tyler Elson. But the guy who really stood out to me was MJ Metz, um, who's also a noted baseball prospect. Six foot five, um, kind of do it all forward for the Ravens. Um, he's going to present some matchup problems for Vista, I think, and just the style that which of which they play. Why I think Vista will win is because they match up very well against that style. You know, Kenny Crest is very guard heavy. Vista, obviously, the strength is in their guard play, and I think their guards are just a scotch above the caliber of, of guard talent that Kenny Crest has. Again, this is going to be like Santa Fe Christian where it comes down to one or two possessions, but I'm going to go with the Panthers. Christian, break the tie. Um, I will go with a clean sweep, uh, or I'll go with a break the tie with in, yeah. in, the, in the Vista favor. Sorry, I'm just used to us all agreeing on this. Um, you know, you, you, this is a tough one, as you talk about the back and forth of, of, of Canyon Crest is a very fundamentally sound team. So this is not something where there's really a weakness to exploit, but you just you look at the speed and physicality of Taurus Samuels, and you just kind of got to lean in the favor of – that being the kind of talent that can, in the last two minutes of a game, take over and make the, the, the clutch shots. All right, so I'm the woman with you, Raven, so pr prove me right. Help me, help me look good. Uh, next year we'll go to also on Friday. It's the Cavers, San Diego, going to Christian. I'm going to go with the Patriots in this one. Aaron, what do you think? I'm going to go with Christian as well. Um, to San Diego's credit, 
um, co um, the new coach there, Coach Basil, has done a really good job of picking up where Maurice Nash left off last year. There are a lot of underrated pieces. A guy that um, I've gotten to see play over over the past you know few games is um, Armand Pendleton, who's a six foot two beast of a forward for San Diego. Um, just athletic, grabs rebounds. They run a lot of play to him to start the, almost every game, and you know when he finishes it, the crowd goes nuts. But we've all also talked about you know teams defending home court, and Christian is no slouch on their home floor. Nasham Carter, a junior, is a, one of those talented guards as you talked about providing parity in in this area, you know. And then of course Jackson Larson, the sophomore, is really good. And they have another sophomore guard um, by the name of Dominic Safarda. A lot of people may not know him, but he's a five foot five wonder kind with the ball, kind of a, a, a mixtape, you know, type player, as it were. I think that's going to be enough to put them over the top um, on their home floor. Christian? I'll say just really easily, this one's a clean sweep. Christian's got tons of talent in all directions. San Diego is a team of the future that is getting better, but getting better doesn't beat already good. Yeah. All right, so all three on board with Christian here. Last game for Friday, we've got Sarah, who we were talking about earlier, traveling to Valhalla, who's yeah. at quietly having a very good year. Yes. I'm going to stick with Sarah on this one, but I think this will be a very, very close ball game. Aaron, what do you think? This is intriguing. I mean, Valhalla quietly had a 15 and two record at the end of not of of the you know tournament schedule. When I looked, I was like, they've won 15 games, and then I looked at their schedule. They beat Mission Bay. I mean, they beat Lincoln. I mean, this is this isn't a, you know this is a slouch team. They won the Montgomery tournament, beating Ramona in, in the process. But Sarah has not lost a game all year. And every time we think that they're going to slip up, they haven't. They've proven that they can, you know, rise to the occasion. Going to Valhalla is not easy. You know, it's deep in East County, in an El Cajon. You know, Sarah, I still feel with the caliber of talent they're bringing to the table with Quincy Farabee and company, I, I like the cues on this one. Christian? Well, I'm going to be the lone Norseman here. Um, okay. I, 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 to me... This is not just about Valhalla being quietly good. This is about Valhalla being new good. They graduated a group of kids last year who had started a whole bunch of games for them and admittedly were talented but lacked that ability to win that clutch game. And this is a new group. Yeah. This is a group that has that ability. And this is the first statement win in that new era with this new lineup for, for Valhalla to come in and say, hey, look, we're going to transition from quietly good to very publicly good mm -hmm. by beating Sarah. All right, so jumping the weekend on over to Monday, we got Orange Glen traveling to Santa Fe, Chris, another interesting game. I'm going to stick with the home team Eagles here. Uh, Aaron, you with me or without me? I'm going to go with Orange Glen on this one. Okay. Um, they've, you know, obviously they slipped up last week, you know, losing to a reloaded Mission Hills that really just took care of business in that New Year's um, New Year's Day classic over, over at Orange Glen. But I like the Patriots. I like Michael Diaz. But I also really am impressed with the play of junior guard Damian Miller, um, who's quietly been one of the steadiest point guards in our region for two seasons now, and we just don't talk about him a lot. Um, the game that I was at where they lost to Mission, um, Mission Hills, actually, no, when they lost to Rancho Bernardo, he almost had a triple-double, 14 points, nine assists, nine rebounds. And this is a foot eight and a half kid. You know, I, I really like – what they do on defense. And I think that this is the game where they put it together on both ends of the floor and they get the upset special. Christian, another tiebreaker game for you. I'm going to go SFC. I think that they just sort of a little more well rounded. Ashiri's, Dudley, you just, yeah. Dimitri Washington. Dimitri Washington. It, 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 it's a team that just has a little bit of everything that can get it done. All right, our final game. It's on Tuesday. It's going to be Mission Bay going to Christian's new favorite, or not my new favorite team, I guess. Hey, <laughs> the I'm team I just made him proud. I, I, uh, I, I, I picked I against them in the championship game last year, and since then I have been trying to make it up. Uh, Mission Bay, yeah, going to Kearney. I am going to take the Buccaneers on this one. Oh! oh! Okay. Oh! Give me Mission Bay on the road at Kearney. Where will – wait. I we, know. I know. I, he wanted, he's got a little boogie fever. <laughs> Rajon. <laughs> I, well, one question I want to know is where are they going to play this game? Because, you know, Kearney had an, an issue with the floor flooding. And, you know, right now, it's not, they're not clear if whether they're going to play their games on their home floor or not. So that's first thing they need is to get ironed away. After that's ironed away, I'm going with Kearney. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to jump on board. 
hopefully they'll let me on the bandwagon for this one. We got room for you. Okay. Um, I'm going to give it to them because Robbie Robinson is playing is at a really high level right now. And whereas I didn't feel he'd be able to be enough to beat Cathedral because, of course, they have a seven-footer in the middle, there is no such impediment you know, in the middle for him. Ronnie Ladding is a really good sophomore at you know, 6'5", but you know, the skill level and, and the maturity of Robbie Robinson is really going to play a role in this game. And so uh, I'm going to give it to the Comets. And Christian picks Mission Bay too. Cool. So, yeah, hey. <laughs> uh, uh, you know, I'm going to go with uh, Kearney. I think that it's real simple. New league for Kearney this year. They had two choices coming into league play: either roll over to the oh, we expect to just Cathedral and Saints and all that, or rise to the occasion. And, and Robbie talked about it preseason with us when he said, "Hey, I'm looking forward to playing against the best because win or lose, I know that we're going to give our best." And right now, them giving their best has translated into a couple really big league wins. So I, I think they keep it going here. All right. So for the first week, we've had a lot of discrepancies between us. It's been pretty boring for the first few podcasts, but now we actually have some differences on the nice. on the. Yeah, it's yeah, nice. Like it. like so someone's going to look stupid this week. Usually me, more than likely. Me. Probably me. Uh, I think it will be me. Uh, guys, anything you want to say before we get out of here? Um, guys, again, we appreciate all the feedback that you've been giving us. Um, let me know who who I haven't seen yet. You know, I'd, I'd love to come out to you know new gyms and, and watch some teams. I've seen quite a lot of games, you know, but admittedly, never enough. Yeah, never enough. So you know, hit me up on Twitter, Full Time Hoops One. You know, you can reach out to me on Instagram as well. Same Full Time Hoops One. Um, you and friends for. I do not have a friend, Stuart. MySpace? No Tinder. No. AM? Nah, none of those. <laughs> Christian. Um, only shout out I really want to give is to John Olive. He's sitting at 399 career wins right now. Um, or, or, or. So Friday. Go check them out against El Camino because El Camino Torrey Pines in itself is going to be a great game. Be a really but that's the kind of moment that it, 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 John Olive does it so quietly and so humbly. Really, you wouldn't know if he's going to be excited or not, even after winning 400. But it, you know, that's a big moment to be at for to local honest, high school. I back. thought he had more than 399 wins. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's quite a feat for Coach Olive. Hats off to you. Yeah, we, we took our hats off before. We were so we were so yes. proud. We yeah. pre took the hats off. <laughs> we'll see you guys next week with more of the same. Thanks for watching.